the next talk. Uh, this is by uh, Marco Fedele uh, from uh, Mox, Politecnico di Milano. So please, Marco, you can share your screen. Yes, are you able okay. to see the screen? Okay, so Marco will talk about novel pipeline for cardiac CNMRI to patient specific image based hemodynamic simulation. So please, Marco. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, Francesco for your uh, uh, presentation. Okay, so my, the talk of today is one aims to, uh, let's say, join the world of cardiac CNMRI with the world of uh, hemodynamic simulation. Um, and uh, it's a, a joint work with Ivan, Christian and Alfio of my group. And of course, with some clinical collaboration that comes from uh, Ospedale Luigi Sacco Milan. So the motivation of my talk comes from clinics um, and we aim to study, uh, let's say, pathologies that are related to an abnormal hemodynamics like uh, hypertrophic, uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy or valvular pathology focused on the left ventricle in particular. Of course, in this context to perform, uh, let's say, a complete electrofluid mechanics model, it's very challenging in patient specific configurations. So what we decided to do is to perform hemodynamic simulation, uh, let's say driven by the motion that comes from the medical images. And uh, additionally, we want to rely on standard clinical images. So not uh, images that are at a research level, but images that can be acquired, let's say, in almost all hospital, hospital on the world. Uh, so we decided to rely on cardiac CNMRI. Uh, cardiac CNMRI are, uh, um, let's say, it's the clinical data that is uh, composed by different series that uh, are, uh, uh, let's say, cutting uh, the art from different planes. And thanks to these different cuts, you can see very well the movement of the art from different perspectives. Uh, you have a very high accurate, uh, a very high and accurate temporal resolution, but on the contrary, you don't have a very good spatial resolution in terms of three-dimensional spatial resolution. The unique uh, three-dimensional data is the so-called short axis view. Uh, but let's say that if we see the short axis view on the other sides, so on the long axis view, you can view, you can see that the spatial resolution is not very good. So using this kind of data to recover a, an accurate three-dimensional ventricle geometry, especially in pathological condition, and to recover its motion, it's, let's say, a challenging operation. For this reason, we uh, propose a new pipeline that starts from CNMRI and create, uh, let's say, an artificial images that we call CNMRI fusions that is mixing all the data coming from the different view uh, available on a classic uh, CNMRI data. Starting from these artificial images, we are able to recover the uh, an accurate three-dimensional geometry of the left ventricle, and then uh, by using image registration to recover also uh, a good displacement field of the complete heartbeat uh, applied to the left ventricle endocardium. Then we create the complete our complete moving com computational mesh, and then we are able to perform CFD simulation on this moving mesh. My talk will be more focused on the pipeline, let's say on the processing pipeline, uh, while at the end we will see, uh, let's say quickly and briefly, some clinical application and some simulation up, uh, applied to uh, interesting clinical application. So the pipeline starts from the so-called CNMRI fusion creation, uh, we build a new algorithm that basically, uh, first of all, create an empty image with a good, uh, a very good um, spatial resolution in all the direction. For each pixel of these artificial images, we compute uh, some interpolation weights that base basically are based on uh, a minimum distance criterion. This computation is quite, uh, it's quite uh, computational demanding, but uh, you, have, you, you have to do just once, and then for each time step available on the uh, CNMRI data, you are able to compute by using these new weights uh, the new intensity value of these artificial images. 
So the output of this uh, Cine uh, fusion is this one. You can see that the accuracy in space uh, is uh, uh, increased. And uh, this is more evident, especially if we have a look at the new artificial images uh, compared to the long axis view of the original short axis series. So you can see that now you can uh, have a look uh, uh, a more detailed uh, view of the uh, myocardium. And from this kind of images, you are able to recover a more accurate uh, left ventricle geometry. So next step is image segmentation. Image segmentation is more, uh, uh, we, we did this with classic image segmentation algorithm. In particular, we use MITK software and we segment uh, independently the endocardium and the uh, epicardial surfaces. It's more innovative instead the way in, uh, that we use to merge the endocardio and the uh, epicardio surfaces. We use a new algorithm that, is, that we call Boolean connection algorithm that we propose in this paper with Professor Quarteroni uh, that is similar to classic Boolean operation, but as output gives uh, you uh, an already read it for meshing surface uh, with a smooth uh, transition between uh, endocardium and epicardium. So this kind of uh, um, polygonal surfaces are then the input of the uh, registration. So next step is image registration. Once again, here we use uh, quite standard image registration tools, but the novelty is more on the input of this registration, starting from the polygonal surface that we build for each time step available on our scene MRI data, we build uh, um, level set images that are almost black and white images that, that are, uh, uh, let's say, an easy input for uh, uh, the registration algorithm. So thanks to this easy input, we are able to recover a transformation on all the, uh, the three-dimensional domain of the level set images and applying this kind of transformation to a, a reference instant of the endocardium uh, of, of our endocardium surface, we are able to recover the three-dimensional displacement field uh, for the complete uh, orbit. So once we uh, build this kind of displacement field and geometry, we uh, aim to build a complete moving uh, computational mesh and to perform a good uh, hemodynamic simulation, we want to extend the domain also to the top part of the, uh, of the left art. So we want to extend the domain to uh, the left atrium and the aortic root. Since from classic CineMRI data, you cannot recover uh, with a good accuracy this kind of geometries, we use a template geometry also because we want to focus on the hemodynamic on the ventricle. And let's say that is just an extension on our domain to make more uh, um, realistic the hemodynamic on the ventricle. Um, and uh, to attach this uh, template geometry to our patient specific one, we use a new algorithm uh, that is called harmonic connection algorithm that basically solve a Laplace Beltrami equation on the template surface uh, in order to find a smooth uh, deformation that is able to attach the uh, ring of the template geometry uh, with the um, uh, with the um, ring of the uh, patient specific uh, geometry. So. Once we obtain the complete domain, we have also to extend the displacement field uh, toward this domain. And we use a similar algorithm that this time uh, it's very important to impose the correct uh, boundary condition to this harmonic extension from the patient specific domain to the template geometry. In particular, by using uh, homogeneous Dirichlet condition on the pulmonary veins and homogeneous Neumann condition on the uh, outlet of the aortic root, we are able to uh, recover a realistic uh, um, uh, movement. Indeed, you can see that the uh, roof of the atrium is almost fixed as expected, and the, de and the vein are fixed, as you can see also in the images, while the aortic root is moving up and down together with the ventricular base. And this kind of movement can be also uh, appreciated from uh, the original medical images. So uh, once we recover this moving mesh, 
for the complete ARCBIT, we are able to perform CFD simulation. Mm -hmm. Here we uh, skip most of the detail because there are already other talks of our group that are uh, um, discussing our CFD model. However, we use finite element method to solve Navier Stokes equation. Sorry. Um, we, uh, of course, we use an ALE configuration where the uh, boundary of the uh, domain moves according to the recover displacement from medical images. And we use a resistive approach for uh, valve modeling. Thanks to this kind of simulation that are performed in live facts, uh, we are able to uh, build, uh, let's say, some and, 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 to, and to compute a hemodynamic indicator that, that can enrich the classic clinical output. So to conclude, I want to show you very um, quickly some clinical applications that are, uh, let's say, ongoing uh, with our clinical, um, clinical collaborator in Ospedale Sacco. In particular, we aim to study the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is a pathology that occurs on the myocardium, uh, so on the cardiac muscle, that becomes uh, in, a, in, a, in an abnormal way too thick. In particular, when, when this thickening occurs on the septum, of the, on the ventricular septum, sometimes can uh, create an obstruction to the left ventricle outflow tract. So during uh, the systole, uh, it can happen that uh, it, this obstruction uh, does not facilitate the ejection of the blood from the ventricle to the uh, aorta. So you can see that here we are uh, uh, we have applied our our pipeline from CNMRI to CFD to uh, in this case two different patients. On the left you can see a, a patient with an hypertrophic cardiomyopathy that is not obstructive. Instead, you can see in, indeed you can see that the uh, velocity is not so uh, so high. It's let's say it's normal in the aorta, while in the case of obstructive cardiomyopathy you can reach even three uh, meters per second as peak velocity. And this is, uh, uh, of course, related also to the pressure field. Uh, if you look at the pressure and the pressure drop during the systolic peak, you can see that when you have an obstructive cardiomyopathy, you can have, uh, let's say, intraventricular pressure drop that are absolutely uh, not normal, and that, of course, does not help uh, the heart to pump correctly uh, the, the blood into the aorta. Uh, another, so here, uh, it, this is clear uh, from, this, uh, from these images. Another application that we are studying is uh, uh, always related to hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, but it's an additional pathology that involves the mitral valve that is called systolic anterior motion of the mitral valve. Uh, so in addition to the uh, uh, thick septum, you, uh, it can happen that uh, during the systole, the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve uh, obstruct the outflow tract of the, uh, of the ventricle. So it's an, an additional problem together with the uh, hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. Here I go very fast, but we uh, published a, a paper on this study uh, that is based, let's say, on a preliminary pipeline similar to the one that we show, that in addition is also able to uh, partially recover the movement of the anterior leaflet from medical images in order to perform a hemodynamic simulation and to compute some clinical indicator that aims to uh, suggest to clinicians where is the part of the septum to be surgically, surgically treated. So uh, to conclude, we uh, succeed to connect called standard clinical images to CFD hemodynamics. We are able to study uh, pathology linked to abnormal hemodynamics and to in future maybe uh, compute hemodynamic indicator that could be uh, used in clinical practice. Of course, it is a quite long pipeline, but uh, most of the part of this pipeline are done by using uh, uh, are performed by using automatic algorithms. So thank you very much for your attention. This is the main bi bibliography and you can find also some open source code, especially for what uh, regarding the cardiac meshing 
on this uh, uh, GitHub repository. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marco, for your talk. Um, so now the floor is open for questions. So in case you have questions, feel free to open your microphone or ask in the in the chat. Uh, in the meanwhile, uh, I have a question. Um, so can you please comment a little more about the human interaction that is needed? So you mentioned that it is really uh, minimal, but uh, if you can also comment about the uh, type of user experience, uh, so how, how much uh, a, a user should be experienced in using this uh, pipeline. Okay, so uh, thank you for your questions. Let's say that for the moment, the most uh, time consuming part is image segmentation, that it's not quite automatic. We are using uh, uh, methods that are uh, based uh, on uh, uh, user interaction. So uh, our, uh, let's say, semi-automatic method. Uh, but of course, if uh, our aim is that in case we want to use this pipeline for a particular pathology, and by using large uh, data set of images, we can uh, exploit, for instance, deep learning method to make this, uh, this part uh, automatic. Concerning the rest of the pipeline, let's say that it's completely automatic and that we aim uh, uh, to release this uh, code together with this paper that is still in preparation in order to make uh, it available to everyone. Okay, thank you. So if there are no further questions, 